What's up, guys? It's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today, we're going to be doing the match preview for Real Mallorca versus Barcelona in La Liga. We are back again already in La Liga action. It's been like, what, a day or two since the Celta Vigo match, and we're already up for another game and it is a very tough match in Real Mallorca away which Barcelona have tend to struggle to in recent years and again the squad right now we've had a few injuries recently but again the job at hand is still very clear nothing but the three points but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 9.30 p.m. local time. So it's half an hour later than the usual kickoff time. And this match will be taking place at the Son Mok Stadium, which of course is the home of Real Sociedad and the referee for this match has also been confirmed on the pitch it will be Alejandro Ruiz who of course refereed the match that we played against Cadez in the second game of the season and on the VR it will be Eduardo Iglesia. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table where Barcelona are currently sat top of the league on 16 points after playing 6 matches we do have 5 wins and one draw the exact same record as second place Girona who have the exact same record of course as us and the only reason why we're first place is because we have conceded one less goal than them we both scored 16 goals but we've conceded 6 goals where Girona have conceded 7 goals so we're on top by one goal difference but we will absolutely take it Real Madrid of course lost yesterday in the Madrid Derby 3-1 and that puts them to third place on 15 points one point behind the first two who are you know essentially tied for first place yeah Athletic club as well on 13 points Athletic Madrid are on 10 points but they have a game in hand because their game against Sevilla was cancelled a few weeks ago so they win that they're technically in fourth essentially but now Barcelona Top of the table, you absolutely, of course, love to see it. And again, this just shows how crucial that Celta Vigo win now was. Imagine if we drew that game, we would have been scratching our heads and, you know, pulling our teeth out. But thank God we got that win, and now we are in the driving seat. Now, when we're in top, usually Barcelona don't tend to let it go. But again, it's still very, very tight in the top three, top four. But again, now everything is in our own hand, and we now control the pace of everything. Now, if you take a look at the top team that he'll be facing this weekend, Real Madrid will be hosting Las Palmas at the Santiago Bernabeu. That could be a bit of a dancing game. Of course, Las Palmas is a very good side. They play very well, but I expect Real Madrid to get a comfortable three points there. And Gerona will be traveling to the Yellow Submarines and facing Villarreal. Now, of course, Villarreal are a very good side, but they have been absolutely shockingly bad recently. Since we beat them when they sacked Kike Setien, they have not been the same whatsoever. But again, we can wait and see. I can sense in that match, Gerona dropping points, whether it's going to be a draw or a loss. Because again, Villarreal, they are desperate for wins. They got to get their momentum going. But again, Gerona are on the floor of their life playing absolutely fantastic football. So that's probably the game of the weekend, in my opinion. Or not the weekend, but the game of the midweek, you could say. So keep your eyes on that. But I think Real Madrid will get three points. But we'll see. Hopefully, Garcia Pimienta and uh, Julian Arujo can uh, do us a favor for sure. So again, Barcelona, we have everything in our own hands. And again, keep in mind as well, we do play first both these two matches Gerona and Real Madrid will be taking place on Wednesday so it's up to Barcelona to put the pressure on them get the three points first and force them to go out and win their matches now if you take a look at our opponents in Real Mallorca and where they're currently standing in the league table they are currently sat in 16th place in La Liga on five points after playing six matches they have one win two draws and three losses and they are currently one point off the relegation zone a very similar situation to Barcelona when they faced Celta Vigo a few days ago so that situation exact same circumstances and now the Barcelona to go and win that game again let's now take a look at our opponents in Real Mallorca like I just mentioned so far during the season they haven't done too well they've only picked up one win out of six but I think on paper they're a fairly decent side the last time we did face them of course was a very historic match a one that I attended to in person it was the final match 
of the Camp Nou as we know it, where Barcelona did end up winning 3-0. I was sitting right up here in the top. I had that perfect view, of course, an absolutely demolition job from Barcelona. The first few minutes were, you know, a bit ropey, but once the fact they got his brace, it was through, uh, cruising sailing. Of course, Balde went off injured. They got a red card. Second half, you know, we had a lot of chances. Gavi scored in the end. It was a very... It was a Usman Dembele master class in this game. I do remember that as well. But it was a very dominant performance in Barcelona. I don't think Mallorca had a sniff in the second half. And in the end, both teams were really fighting for nothing. Barcelona already won the league. Mallorca were already safe from relegation. It was just about Barcelona leaving the Camp Nou on the right foot. And Mallorca essentially had no chance. So it was a good day at the office for Barcelona. But again, circumstances and things like that did affect this game. But again, Barcelona did comfortably, and I mean comfortably, win that match. Now, if you take a look at Real Mallorca's last six matches in all competition, in their last match, they did lose to Gerona 5-3. They beat Celta Vigo 1-0. They drew 0-0 with Athletic Club. They lost to Granada 3-2. They lost to Villarreal 1-0. And they drew with Las Palmas 1-1. So these are their first six matches, essentially, in the league. I think for their standards, a very difficult run. Las Palmas, very good side. Villarreal, good side. Granada, newly promoted. That should have been, maybe you could say, a win, but they were away. Athletic Club, very good side. So there we go. We already know about them. And of course, Hanona currently tied for top of the league. So a fairly ropey start for them in terms of the personnel they had to face. But let's take a look at the last three matches in all competition. Firstly is the nil-nil draw at home to Athletic Club. I think this will be a similar match to what we could face again. Athletic Club are a good side in the top four. And this is how Mallorca controlled them. And their default formation, lads, is a 5-3-2. So not only are they going to probably play a 5 the back just because we're Barcelona, but that's their formation that they play week in week out. Of course, they're their full backs in um, uh, Pablo Maffeo, who we were linked with a lot in the summer, and of course, Tony Lato, who they signed from Valencia. Uh, so they signed, of course, Sergi Dar there, their captain of Espanyol, who again was linked with Barcelona as well. They signed my Canadian brother, Kyle Lahren, as well, who got relegated with Real Valladolid. So they signed a lot of the top players that were relegated, essentially, and of course, their main man, Moroki up front, who of course saved them in so many sense. In this match, I think they competed very well against a very good athletic club side. Both teams had their chances, but in the end, no one can get that winning goal. Next up is their 1-0 victory against Celta Vigo away. Something that Barcelona rarely do. It was a very, very good win for them. And I tell you what, it was a very, very even matchup where Celta Vigo did have a lot of chances that they just couldn't finish. And Moroki in the final, I think last 10 minutes, Cross came in from the left. He pokes it home, gives them the lead, and in the end, they shut down shop and they walk away with their first three points of the season. And the last match of all competition was a 5-3 loss away in the city of Barcelona to Girona. Now, I didn't watch this game. I'll tell you what, uh, Real Mallorca went 1-0 up, and Moroki scored a penalty, and then after that, Girona scored five goals in the space of, like, in-game 40 minutes. I think from, like, the 20th minute to, like, the 65th minute, uh, Girona got five goals. The two other goals that Mallorca got were two of, in the last second. They both came in from corners, from crosses. Um, I think, again, Girona dominated this match, and I think Mallorca defensively were absolutely shocking and again this is something that Barcelona can exploit but again Hanona do have that home field advantage so they have you know the crowd and the energy with them I think if this was away I don't think the scoreline would have been this generous but in the end Hanona dominated walked with three uh, fairly points and Mallorca struggled a lot especially in the defensive transition so overall final thoughts on Real Mallorca I think they're a very very good side who's had a very difficult start of the season facing very tough opponents I think they're very well managed by the manager Javier Agueri who's very experienced in the league as well he's beaten Barcelona a few times um, again his play style is very simple park the bus and counter-attack but again for his criteria for his objective just to stay in the league it fits their style and their system and their players perfectly as well now on the players place to go out for there is quite a few again Maroki their striker who has been on form for them for the past probably six months I'd watch out for their fullbacks as well Tony Lato and Pablo Maffeo they're gonna be bombing down those full uh, those flanks Sergio Dard there of course been talking a lot of smack about Barcelona in the media recently saying oh I rejected them blah 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 blah, blah. so he's gonna probably have the game of his life to be expected but again this is a team that's filled with veterans and also filled with their young talent their goalkeeper has done very well this season as well he's been probably one of their key players alongside Maroki up front as well again this team they're gonna play 
play with a lot of passion, a lot of desire, especially in that five back, it's gonna make it very, very difficult from the get go for Barcelona. And again, Barcelona for this match, all I can really suggest for them is they have to keep creating chances. Of course, make sure at the back that you're tight and you're compact, have that high line, but you have to keep creating and creating chances, whether it's narrow, whether they push you on the flanks, you have to create those moments for the front line, because if you don't, It'll be either nil nil or it'll Mallorca one nil win. I tell you what, if they do go up by one goal or two goals, it is done. Of course, against Celta, the same thing happened, but we were at home, so that does give us a bit of a chance away. It's not going to happen. So again, for Mallorca, they do have the tactical plan to beat Barcelona. It's just whether or not they can execute it or not. Let's now take a look at the squad list. The squad list for this match has been released and confirmed, and it is as follows. Sir Stegen, Cancelo, Balde, Arujo, Martinez, Gavi, Ferran Lewandowski, Rafinha, Inaki, Peña, Joao Felix, Christensen, Alonso, Romeo, Roberto, Gundogan, Kunde, Astralaga, Laman, Yamal, and Fermin Lopez. Of course, the two exclusions, Frankie de Jong and Pedri still injured. Apart from that, no other changes, no other surprise inclusion. It is the exact squad, essentially, that we did expect. Time now to get into Chavi's press conference reaction. This press conference morning, of course, has asked a lot of questions from the media that he answered fairly quickly. This was a, a short press conference of what we're normally used to, but again, he did answer all the questions, gave some insights on the injuries, upcoming matches, and features of some players as well. So let's get to see what the gaffe had to say this morning in the presser. He came out saying that Mallorca is a difficult opponent, a complicated ground, and we're going to find an aggressive opponent, especially after what happened to them on Saturday against Girona. He's then asked on the injury of Frankie de Jong, saying that Frankie de Jong is an absence. He's a key player in our playing style. We have many options in the midfield, and his return will depend on his feelings. I can't say anymore. If we are leaders, it is because we are doing things well. That is the feeling that we are being competitive. The other day, we didn't play a good game. We have analyzed why, and we're going to try and correct those errors. Then asked on the uh, injury update on Pedri, saying that Pedri has very good feelings. We'll see when he gets back. We have options in the midfield, such as... This man really name drops Sergi Roberto. <laughs> May God help us. He says such as Sergi Roberto who can occupy different positions. And we also have Fermin Lopez, which of course is a big, uh, better sight to see. He said that Fermin Lopez is a great discovery, a player to keep in mind. He can be very important in the next month or so. Whether we have a better or worse squad than Real Madrid, I'll tell you that in June. There are ways of seeing and understanding football. I'm very happy with my squad, but I don't like to compare. Then he was asked about Rafinha and his lack of minutes so far this season, saying that Rafinha will be very important. He hasn't played much because he was sent off, and that's why he hasn't had many minutes as the rest, but he will be very important throughout the entire season. Joel Felix suits our system, and in the end, if you have the talent, it ends up coming out somehow, and he has been in a very good moment. Then he was asked about how he feels about Dembele so far at PSG this season. I don't know why this question is relevant to Barcelona in any way, shape, or form, but Chevy answered it, saying that, look, I don't hold any grudges against Dembele. On the the contrary, I hope he does well at PSG. Again, he got his first assist over the weekend. I mean, I really don't give a flying shite about Dembele. Then asked about Gavi, saying that Gavi is the soul, the heart, and the passion. He is a total footballer. He is very important for the team and does very well adding offensively with his goals and assists. With Frankie out, I honestly think that Gavi is probably top two, top three most influential, informed Barcelona players at the moment. Then asked about the midfield, that lack of numbers currently with both Pedri and De Jong out. He's asked where Gundogan could play in the pivot if Romeo gets up, uh, you know, one be arrested or whatever the case may be. Saying that, look, Gundogan can play in the pivot, of course, yes. But we believe that his main potential is to make the last passage, reach the area and score goals, especially without Pedri. So Chavi say that, look, we, we I think we think Gundogan can definitely do a job in the pivot, but we need someone to fill in the Gavi role, and right now he's the most suitable for that, and that's why we had to keep him in that position. Then as well, the Major Derby saying that yes, I watched Major Derby yesterday. It was a great match of football, especially for Atletico Madrid, an important victory for them. Asked about rotations, and that yes, we will rotate in each game. We have to make at least two or three changes in the starting lineup, which you know. Gavi starting tomorrow is going to be counted as a change probably in Chavi's book, but then again, I don't I don't think Chavi will really do two or three changes week in, week out. I can see maybe one or two. I think three is a bit too much for Mr. Javier. And finally, Chavi was asked about the injury of Victor Roque, and he clued up by saying that yes, there is a chance that Victor Roque will come in January. We hope that he recovers well, and we're in constant contact with his current club in Brazil. And that concludes Chavi's press comments reaction ahead of the match against Real Mallorca tomorrow.
Let's now get into the lineup prediction. We're going to start with the manager, of course, Xavi Hernandez. I'm going to try my best to predict this lineup. Again, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I do have an excellent record of predicting Xavi's lineups this season. I've been correct in like five or six of them, and I've been like one off in like two of them. So let's see what I predict here. And I have gone with this lineup on the screen right now. I've gone with Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Cancelo, Arujo, Kunde, and Balde. Midfield three of Romeo, Gundogan, and Gavi, and a front three of Rafinha, Lewandowski, and Juo Felix. So firstly, midfield three, set in stone, 100%, no changes whatsoever. Again, this is the only midfield three, essentially, that we do have. I mean, Lopez, of course, going to be that uh, fourth choice, along with Sergio Roberto being an emergency option. Now, in the back five, I do sense that Xavi could rest Cancelo, but with this being an away game, we need to win. I don't think he will. I think he will risk him for sure. I think Aruho will return to the starting lineup, and that will, of course, leave Christensen on the bench, and that will be one of his changes. Of course, Balde coming in, another one of his changes. Uh, Gavi starting, another one of his changes. Now, in the front line, I have gone with Rafinha on the right-hand side. I think Fran Torres in the last game didn't really take his opportunity. You could start Lamen Yamal, but again, in a way game like this, you want to keep it very conservative. You want to trust those players with the experience. I think Lamen Yamal coming on this game half an hour to go will be way more threatening than if he starts the game. And again, it comes down to Xavi's game plan as well. I think Xavi will stick with the natural uh, formation that he does have. But again, we're going against a five back. We have struggled a lot in recent uh, months. Will he try something different? That is a possibility. But I think based on the current system and style, I think Chavi will select this lineup. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think Chavi will go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was a Barcelona coach. And I have made one change from Chavi's lineup. And this is me being very, very scared. I have selected this lineup on the screen right now with one change being I have taken out Cancelo and put in Andreas Christensen and we have now the original back line with Kunde at right back. Now my logic is that Kunde, Aruho and Christensen will end up being a back three and of course Balde will be given the license to go forward and help in the attack. Now you could obviously play Cancelo at left back and have that same outlook but I have gone Baldi again because Cancelo has been playing a lot of minutes lately. And Baldi was only was arrested against um, Celta Vigo. Only played, I think, like 25 minutes or so. Half an hour at the most. I think, again, with the team that we're coming up against, with their system that they're going to play, five at the back, it's going to be difficult to break down when you need those extra numbers in there. You have that back three. You can even drop in Romeo and create that back four. I think you had to go with something that where the chemistry is there. Of course, Cancelo, he's just being integrated. I understand that. I think he's been playing very well, of course. He mentioned the last match how he was very, very poor. He lacked concentration throughout the whole entire game. So I put him on the bench. I think against him to Lamen I think his impact off the bench would be very, very huge as well. And again, give him some rest as he has been playing significant amount of minutes recently. I think this lineup can definitely get the job done along with the lineup of Chavi. I think if either lineup is selected, I wouldn't be upset. But I think this lineup, it's more you know, defensively sounded, and also you have that attacking prowess as well. And that's the line that I would select for this match, but of course, in the comments down below, let me know if you'd rather pick my lineup or Travis lineup. Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match, ladies and gentlemen? This is going to be a very, very tight game. I don't see many goals in it. I think Barcelona will win this match, and I have gone Barcelona winning this match by one goal to nil. It was either between 1-0 or 2-1, but I honestly don't th see that many goals in it. I think Mallorca will be very, very tight, very, very conservative, parking the bus. I don't think they'll have too many chances going forward. Of course, they're clinical like Celta Vigo were. Then you know what, this game could be different, but I think Celta Vigo were a very rare case. We come up against the teams all the time who park the bus, go in the counterattack, have a few chances and miss. Celta Vigo just very, very clinical and credit to them. But again, they do have the players, of course, Mallorca to be clinical. They have very good front lines, of course, very good defenses as well. But I think Barcelona, with the pressure on them, being top of the table, I think Xavi going with a fairly strong lineup. I think in the end, Barcelona will get it over the line and win this match. And I have gone Barcelona and win this match by one goal to nil, but a very, very tight game. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think the scoreline will be. So that was a match preview for Real Mallorca versus Barcelona in La Liga. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing firstly, of course is your score prediction. And secondly on the lineups, first would you rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup? What do you think Chavi would go with? What would you go with? You're the manager. Leave me all your thoughts down below and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. 
set the reminder on the screen and come and join me watch the game with me fall straight for the match by match review so i'll see you guys tomorrow very very close game it will not be easy but of course the three points are a must take care and force a barca Let's go.